Good afternoon. So it is noon on the dot, and I want to be respectful of everyone's time, so we will go ahead and get started. And firstly, I want to welcome each and every one of you, and thank you for attending this webinar today to talk about the Master of Legal Studies in Cybersecurity and Data Privacy here at Cleveland Marshall College of Law at Cleveland State University. So we'll start off with some brief introductions. Um, I want to introduce myself if we haven't had the pleasure to speak yet. I am Julie DiBiasio. I'm the Director of Graduate Studies and Professional Development here at Cleveland Marshall College of Law. Um, you've probably received many emails from me, maybe even possibly some phone calls from me. So um, I hope to speak to you soon if we have not yet. Um, but also with me today are two faculty members at Cleveland Marshall College of Law. Um, the first one is John Pleshnik. John Pleshnik is our director of the Master of Legal Studies program. And John is on the call today, so I'm going to toss it over to John to just briefly introduce himself and welcome all of you. Hello. Can you hear me now? Julie, yes. Am I live? You are live, yes. Excellent. As I was saying, I am Professor John Pletchnik, and I'm honored to serve as director of our Master of Legal Studies program, including our track in cybersecurity. I really do want to take the time to welcome you not only to Cleveland Marshall, one of the oldest and most respected law schools in the Midwest of the United States, but Cleveland State University as a whole. And I like to remind our students that you'll have access not only to the law school, but the entire university which is very important in a program of cybersecurity where we not only concern ourselves with legal risks and standards, but business strategy. It's really an interdisciplinary field that bridges a lot of different areas. And Cleveland State is a renowned research institution with over 5,000 graduate students that call us our intellectual home from across the world. So I always emphasize to students that it's not just the resources of the law school, but the entire university, and you'll be joining the Viking family. I, I apologize in advance, but I'm actually having a meeting to look at a future case for our law school clinic. So I'm gonna to have to get off the call after this, but I really do wanna take the time to welcome you, introduce myself. And I know that Julie will be sharing our contact information throughout the webinar, but I wanna encourage any of you to reach out to me with more questions. Thank you, John. I really appreciate you stopping in for a moment to welcome our students and introduce yourself. Thank you, Julie. Yes. And then next, I'm excited to introduce all of you to Professor Brian Ray. Um, not only will you have Professor Brian Ray as a faculty member in this course, but he is also the director for, of the Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection and was instrumental and spearheaded creating this program for our College of Law. So Brian, I'll toss it over to you to give a brief introduction of yourself. Thanks, Julie, and welcome, everybody. Uh, as Julie mentioned, uh, this program uh, is one uh, that I helped to create as part of our um, Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection, uh, which is an interdisciplinary center housed at the law school uh, that brings together experts uh, across all of the relevant disciplines in cybersecurity. Uh, and one of, the, one of the excellent features of this program is you'll have access to the resources of that center and, and um, you'll also be invited to participate in many of the center's activities, uh, including the center's annual conference, which due to COVID-19 was postponed until September uh, and we're almost certainly gonna host it online this year and we'll provide uh, each of you, if you become students in the program, uh, with free access to that, uh, that exciting program, which um, includes a keynote from one of the Federal Trade Commissioners, which is one of the leading regulatory agencies in this field. So I'm excited to tell you more about the program uh, and I'll give it back to Julie for now. Great, thank you, Brian. All right, so what I want to go over briefly today is just what we will discuss during this webinar. Um, we already introduced ourselves and who's on the call. I'll give you a brief overview of who Cleveland Marshall College of Law is. Um, we'll go over why this program might make sense for you and your career goals. Um, we'll go over the admissions process and next steps. 
and then we'll open it up to a question and answer. I do want to mention though, at any time if a question comes to you, please feel free to chat me the question or in the question and answer box to ask your question. Um, we would love for this to be as dynamic as possible. So you don't have to wait until the question and answer portion to ask any questions. Okay, so who are we? Who is Cleveland Marshall College of Law at Cleveland State University? Well, we are a 122 year old student centered law school committed to both excellence and opportunity, social justice, and providing lawyers and professionals who are leaders in their field. We're located in the heart of downtown Cleveland, Ohio. If you are not from Cleveland, Ohio, when it is safe to travel here or anywhere really, um, I strongly encourage you to come to campus, meet um, your fellow class classmates, the faculty members. Um, we would love to host you on campus. Like Brian mentioned, we do usually have an on-campus annual cybersecurity conference. Um, this year in September, it'll be online, but we are hopeful next year it'll be on campus. So we'd love for you to come to campus um, and meet us. And what John Pleshnik, our faculty director, mentioned um, when he was giving his introduction was that just because you're an online student does not mean that you don't have access and all the amenities that the Greater University of Cleveland State University provides. So you are a 100% Cleveland State University student and you have access to all those amenities. Um, and just a little bit more about Cleveland Marshall College of Law is our mission here is learn law, live justice, and we are your law school for life. And we tr truly believe that. And I think you'll see that through our student-centered approach. We truly provide the opportunity for our grads to become successful in whatever field that you choose. Um, and a fun fact is we are actually one of the first to create a master's of legal studies degree in our region. So we have a lot of experience in this space and are excited to bring this new online master of legal studies to you. And so without further ado, I'm going to toss it back to Professor Brian Ray, um, and he's going to give you an overview of this program. Thanks, Julie. So this program is uh, distinctive and possibly unique in the broader field of cybersecurity and data privacy because we uh, combine all three of the major areas um, and then emphasize the legal uh, and business perspectives. Uh, and so we'll give you a thorough grounding in the technical side and we'll, we'll go into detail about that a little bit more, but through the two core courses, Cybersecurity 1 and 2. Uh, and then we um, provide an overview of the legal dimensions in the third core course, Privacy Law and Management. And then in the upper level courses, uh, we go further into that legal and strategic side. And the reason that we put the um, degree together in this way as we, as we spoke extensively with um, experts in the field across disciplines um, and one of the things one of the, co the common themes that ran through um, all of those discussions is that to advance uh, your career in this field and to really uh, be, take on a senior management role you you need to understand uh, the legal and strategic dimensions uh, so we do not um, provide a an entry level grounding uh, that goes deep into the technical side. Uh, we give you enough to understand the technical aspects, but really we provide that more upper level uh, advanced perspectives that integrates the technical with the legal uh, and policy, which is um, advantageous really in any field, uh, whether you're coming at it from a compliance perspective uh, or um, sitting in a technical role, but want to take on a more senior role that has um, those uh, management strategic responsibilities. And so um, just to flesh that out a little bit, what you're seeing in this space is literally an explosion of regulations across the world. Uh, the European Union's general data protection regulations uh, were really the first comprehensive set of regulations around data protection. They've now become a de facto model for many other jurisdictions around the world. 
uh, as well as a regulatory obligation that many um, many organizations and companies outside of the EU have to uh, navigate because of interactions they have uh, with EU citizens. And then within the United States, uh, there, there are on again, off again discussions about a federal law, um, but at the state level, we're seeing a number of uh, laws emerge and California has been the leader here. The California Consumer Privacy Act uh, came into force last year. Uh, and although the regulations are still being fleshed out, it is uh, a really significant law that affects a large number of US entities outside of California as well as inside because of the large role that California plays in the economy. Uh, and then more broadly, many states have looked at the California model and either proposed or in the process of adopting uh, legislation that looks a lot like it. And so all of that adds up to the fact that regardless of whether you're sitting in a technical role, uh, a compliance role, uh, or, a, or a business strategic role, you need to understand uh, what these laws require and how what you do in your space um, might be affected by what they require and how it might require you to, to do things uh, in a different way or to adopt alternative solutions. And so law really permeates um, all of these areas. And so uh, in terms of career outlook, uh, this is a space that's just continuing to grow. Uh, it's growing on the technical side as well as the legal uh, compliance size, uh, side, driven not only by um, the expansion of these legal and regulatory obligations, but by the simple fact that we're continuing uh, to intensify our use of digital materials. Uh, the COVID-19 lockdown uh, further accelerated uh, movements online. Uh, and all of that has created additional opportunities, uh, threats, risks that need to be assessed. Uh, again, not only from a technical perspective, but also from a legal uh, and compliance perspective. And so this data is general data from CyberSeq. Uh, a lot of those numbers are technical roles, but as I said before, even those technical roles uh, benefit from having this broader uh, perspective. And then the other side of the coin uh, or, or um, that, that isn't completely represented in these numbers is the dramatic expansion uh, on the privacy side and the need for privacy professionals. Um, and that is uh, a space that we are particularly um, adept in and have significant resources in. And we've been in discussions with the major um, body in this area, the International Association of Privacy Professionals, uh, to begin to develop um, some exciting relationships that we hope to have announcements about uh, next year. But our curriculum is recognized as one of the most robust uh, curriculums in this space to prepare both uh, privacy professionals and security professionals on the legal and security side. And so this slide nicely recaps um, what I've been uh, talking about over the last several slides. Uh, in, in short, our program gives you a thorough grounding in all three aspects uh, and then goes deep on the legal and strategic side and gives you really a hands-on perspective. Uh, and we'll, we'll go into a little more detail when we get to the specific curriculum, but after giving that technical grounding and after giving the thorough grounding uh, in law generally, uh, we then move in the upper level courses to really advance your understanding uh, in specific areas that have a lot of privacy and security regulations. And we, we um, use those upper level courses to teach you how to combine the technical and legal aspects. Great, thank you, Brian, for going over the program. I wanna pause just to make sure there aren't any questions about um, what we've covered thus far. All right. Um, so I briefly want to touch on our program details and how this program is structured. So this is a completely online program. So it doesn't matter if you live in Cleveland, Ohio, or if you live in Utah, you are able to enroll in this program. And we enroll students every semester for this program. Our next upcoming semester is the fall semester. Um, but we do, like I said, enroll students in fall, spring, or summer semesters. Um, it is a total of 30 credit hours. So what's that, what that means, and we'll talk more about the classes in the next slide, but you will take a total of 10 courses, um, two courses per semester if you do this on a part-time basis, 
um, which comes out to about five semesters. Though we are able to be flexible, so if you want to take more than two courses a semester, we can work that out with you. So that's just a conversation that you and I can have privately. Um, I have included some information about the tuition here um, and financial aid information that's offered through Cleveland State University. I am more than happy to set up a meeting with you individually to talk about this more in depth in your individual situation to make sure um, that you have all the information you need before applying for this program. And so here is the curriculum laid out and in a second I'll have Brian go over these courses a little bit more in depth so you can really understand what you're um, going to learn in this program. But like I stated, you have 10 courses. If you take it this way, so take it on a part-time basis, you will take the courses in this order. Um, and these courses are online, like I said, and they're built in an asynchronous or synchronous component. Um, if you're not familiar with online instruction, that may seem um, new to you. And what that really means is the asynchronous part is most of these courses you will do at your own pace. So you'll log on to Canvas, which is the platform that we use. You'll see what your assignments and readings are for the week. Um, there may be some lectures that you have to watch and you'll do that on your own pace and make sure you have everything completed for the next week of courses. Um, but we also include a synchronous component, which means some live courses where you'll log on at a certain time be able to interact with your faculty member, um, the other students that are in your class, so it feels like a real classroom experience. Um, so Brian, since you teach in this class, I want to toss it back to you to talk about um, the asynchronous versus synchronous component and then of course go into some more detail on the courses laid out below. Sure, so the combination of asynchronous and synchronous is deliberate so that you get the benefits really of, of both worlds in terms of pedagogical approaches. The asynchronous overall structure, which is the vast majority of the content, is designed so that working professionals can do this program part-time uh, while they maintain uh, their current career and, and work full-time, uh, and basically gives you the flexibility to access the materials uh, when you have the time uh, and when you are able to focus on them uh, within an overall structure of having to complete them across the course of a week with some internal uh, deadlines within that week to make sure that you don't uh, let things back up and that you end up being overwhelmed at the end. Then we combine that with three or four synchronous live classes, which are optional if you, if you absolutely can't attend. Uh, we do record them, but we highly recommend them because that really is the time uh, that gives us as faculty the opportunity to get to know you uh, on an individual level, um, hear about how you're uh, experiencing the course, and then you know layer in some of that content that's better delivered live. And so you get to know us in a way that you don't through a purely asynchronous program. We get to know you. It replicates um, that aspect of the learning experience uh, while still giving you flexibility for the most part to do the work uh, on your own and at your own part pace, again, uh, provided that you keep up with that week to week work, which uh, in our experience and uh, our partners experience is necessary to, to better ensure uh, completion rates. If we let you just try to do it all on your own and give you no deadlines, then uh, we know from experience just life gets in the way and people don't don't get things done. So it's, uh, it's really a, a well vetted structure and uh, one that so far has worked quite well for our students. When it, in terms of the content, uh, what we have created is based on a uh, program that we have taught for a number of years uh, live in our Juris Doctor program that trains uh, people to become lawyers, combined with the core components of our live uh, MLS program. And so you're getting the same content adapted slightly for this online asynchronous format. Uh, that we teach to uh, students who are becoming lawyers. And um, what the way it proceeds is in the first semester, you get that thorough grounding I mentioned in both law and the technical side of cybersecurity. Introduction to American Law is a course that I teach, uh, and we created it completely anew for this program so that it focuses not only on giving you a grounding in uh, legal 
analysis legal materials, uh, but does so in a way that focuses primarily on the kinds of materials and legal uh, areas you'll encounter in cybersecurity and privacy. And then Cybersecurity One is a course um, that is adapted from a computer science curriculum designed to be accessible to people with non-technical backgrounds, but also useful to people with technical backgrounds. Uh, gives you that first um, first thorough grounding in cybersecurity as a technical discipline. Then in the second semester, we continue to build on both of those. Um, legal writing uh, is really a, a, a more intensive uh, deep dive into the use of legal materials. We teach you how to do legal research, uh, how to consume, and to some extent, um, create your own uh, materials that include legal analysis that would be understand, that will allow you to understand materials produced by lawyers uh, and to be able to produce uh, materials uh, for lawyers. Again, with an emphasis, we've recreated that course so that it emphasizes um, cybersecurity and privacy, and it's taught by a seasoned professional who is a lawyer uh, in a cybersecurity practice. Then Cybersecurity 2 is uh, built directly upon Cybersecurity 1. It goes back over the same set of materials, but now uh, reviewing them uh, in the context of a team project where you um, create um, your own uh, cybersecurity program set of controls for a what, what's called a HIPAA compliant business associate. So HIPAA is the major healthcare uh, law. It was one of the first comprehensive laws in the United States that combined cybersecurity and privacy requirements. And, and it's still one of the most um, detailed areas with those requirements. And so in cybersecurity too, you're now using that general doctrine you learned and those general skills you learned in one uh, and applying them in the context of a healthcare setting. Uh, and then in the third semester, uh, we go deeper uh, in um, build again on cybersecurity too to teach you HIPAA. And we use HIPAA both because Cleveland Marshall along with cybersecurity is nationally known for its healthcare law program. And so we have deep expertise there, but also, as I said before, because HIPAA is an, one of the best examples in the United States of a federal law that has extensive regulatory obligations. And so it, it's really used as an example of other detailed regulatory regimes that you'll encounter. Uh, and then corporate compliance one, uh, gives you, takes a sort of step away from the specifics of security and privacy to give you an overall understanding of how compliance works, uh, but weaves into that compliance in cybersecurity and privacy. Uh, and then uh, the fourth and the fifth semester, and the, in semester four, uh, you have privacy law and management. And sometimes we flip this sequence uh, after the first two semesters isn't set in stone. Uh, privacy and law and management, sometimes we teach before HIPAA and privacy. But privacy and law and management is our survey course um, done in an operational setting and taught by um, a, a, a or, or created uh, by the chief privacy officer of a Fortune 14 company, Ingram Micro. Uh, and it's structured, again, to give you that operational understanding, not just of the legal doctrine itself and legal cases, but of how to integrate those requirements into a working, living, and breathing privacy program. Corporate Compliance 2 then uh, builds on Corporate Compliance 1 to go deeper uh, and into more detail about uh, compliance generally. And then in the last semester, uh, we have two um, capstone courses, um, Cybercrime, which is a, uh, uh, an upper level legal course that focuses on um, the criminal law side of cybersecurity. Uh, again, taught by a, a deeply experienced um, practicing lawyer uh, who's part of our program already. And then cybersecurity risk assessment and compliance brings both sides together and is adapted from a, essentially a clinical course that we teach here um, where you'll um, simulate the, pro you'll learn about the process of doing cybersecurity risk assessments uh, and simulate uh, doing one uh, for uh, an organization. So you get an understanding of how to bring the legal compliance uh, and technical sides together. Great, thank you, Brian. Are there any questions that you have about the courses specifically before we move on? And like John mentioned at the beginning, um, I know Brian would be more than happy to speak to you individually if you do have some more specific questions about the curriculum or the career outcomes. Um, so you can always feel free to email me and I can set you up with Brian or John um, if you want to speak to a faculty member more in depth. 
Yeah, and, oh, and just to oh, emphasize that point, Julie, one of the things that we really try to do with this program is make sure that the students who are coming in uh, are a good fit and that it's a good fit for you. And so I'm always happy to talk with you about uh, where you are in your current career, why you're interested in this program and talk through um, how you can figure out whether it's the right fit for you because uh, we know it's a very high quality program and it delivers a set of skills and knowledge that are valuable in a variety of career settings, uh, but it's not for everyone. And um, so, uh, for example, one of the things we emphasize is if you are looking to transition directly into an, an entry level technical cybersecurity position, uh, this is not going to give you all of those technical skill sets. It'll be valuable later in your career, uh, but if you need you know, if you need a deep dive um, and to get the technical side, uh, we usually recommend you, you, know, you look at something like a, a technical training program by SANS or CompTIA, uh, and then look at us later when you're thinking about um, advancing uh, your career. Great, thank you for adding that. Um, and just briefly here, I wanna go over next steps um, and the application process just a bit. So you will apply to this program online via our webpage at CSULawOnline.com. <clears throat> I've listed here, excuse me, what's needed for a completed application. It's relatively simple. Um, a current resume, a personal essay describing how you expect to use this degree, your motivation for this degree. Um, and that really goes into what Professor Brian Ray just stated is that we really encourage you to reach out to us if you're considering this program to ensure that this is the right program for you. Um, and by doing that, we'll help you write your essay that way. Um, it'll just kind of naturally flow within the conversation because we want to make sure that your investment in this program um, is worth it and that you'll be happy with the return on investment for this program. Um, and then of course, we'll need an unofficial or official transcript showing that you have a bachelor's degree. Um, and I can speak to you on how to obtain those if you need any help with that at all. Our next application deadline for the fall semester is August 10th and the fall semester starts on September 8th. So the good news is if you're considering this program, you still have plenty of time to apply and gather your application materials. Um, but again, I wanna reiterate that I am here, Brian is here, John is here to speak with you individually if you have any questions surrounding your fit for the program or your application. Here is my contact information. Um, if you email the MLS online address, it'll come to myself, John, and Brian. So all three of us will see that. Um, many of you, as I can see on here, I've either, either spoken with you on the phone already or I know I've sent you emails, so you already have my email address. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me at any time. If you request a meeting with John or Brian, I will also set that up for you. And so now I want to open it up to any questions that you have. And if you give me a moment, I'm going to look in the ch chat and question and answer box to see. Um, Brian, I have a question for you. And this is actually a really good question. Um, it's a more general question. But Brian, you were the director of a mass, the Master of Legal Studies degree program before John. So I know you have a lot of area or a lot of expertise in this space. But can you talk a little bit more about a Master of Legal Studies degree? what it is and why it is a competitive degree to have in this specific marketplace and why we feel it is the important to degree to combine with cybersecurity and data privacy. Sure, uh, and I see Terrell has also posted a, a related um, question in the chat that I'll address. What are the common uh, job titles of professionals that obtain this degree? Perfect, So Thank more you. generally, uh, of course, more generally, the Master of Legal Studies is a degree for professionals who know, who currently or expect in the future to work on a regular basis with legal materials. Um, compliance is, is, of course, one of the one of the many areas where that occurs, uh, but don't uh, need or want the JD because they're not going to practice law. They're not going to uh, either litigate in the courtroom or perform um, 
the many roles that an in-house counsel performs, but they're working regularly uh, with legal professionals and recognize the value of being able to understand uh, the legal size. Uh, and cybersecurity and privacy is, is an excellent uh, example of an area uh, where you, you absolutely need to be able to understand um, the law um, because the law is one of the drivers of uh, the risk that you're going to encounter uh, from a business side and from a compliance side. And it also increasingly drives the technical requirements that you have to adopt um, for your security and privacy programs. Um, and so one great example, again, is the healthcare setting that we talked about before. Um, HIPAA has a variety of requirements that get very fairly specific around the kinds of technical controls that you have to have in place uh, to be compliant. And so um, you have to, you know, you just really have to be able to understand those. Uh, and then on the flip side, when there's an incident um, that, re you know, that requires uh, remediation that always poses legal risk. Uh, and while the security, uh, the technical folks aren't involved in directly managing that risk, they're involved directly and in, in often in, in real time in urgent situations in having to translate what they're seeing as a technical matter uh, to the lawyers uh, in the business side and, and helping them to evaluate, well, what kind of risks do we have? What kind of legal obligations uh, do we have? And so this is an area uh, where getting that degree uh, has a lot of value. Uh, and, it, and it's a degree that comes from a law school. And as I said before, here in this program in particular, uh, you're essentially getting the same content uh, that the lawyers um, are getting. And that's that's really the 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 value of our degree and the distinctive contribution we make to this field is we're helping professionals on both sides to be able to talk to one another. We're giving lawyers grounding in the technical side, which uh, is unusual, if not unique among law schools. And then likewise, providing this legal, legal aspect um, integrated with some technical expertise uh, for others. In terms of job titles, um, the, what, what our program, our program does not map directly to specific job titles. Instead, it provides a skill set and knowledge base that a variety of uh, job that, you know, that are, that are a major component of a lot of uh, job titles. So compliance is one area that, you know, that, that it maps very, very closely to uh, chief compliance officer, uh, down to, you know, people in HR uh, and other other areas. And then when you look at the senior roles um, that have security and privacy um, aspects to them, so uh, CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, or CPO, Chief Privacy Officer, uh, and then some of the very specific roles that are mandated by um, the EU, uh, Data Protection Officer and others, uh, those are the kinds of roles uh, where this degree has incredible value because of how it integrates and shows you how to combine uh, the technical and legal side. And so there are a, a, a wide variety of, um, of, of roles where this is valuable, um, and, and including you know, a number of our students uh, currently come from the security field. Um, we have one individual who's part of a progressive security team. Uh, we have another one um, who comes uh, from uh, from the healthcare side. And so there are a variety of roles in which this is valuable, but it really you know, adds value to almost any, um, any career in which you want to advance to a uh, senior management level because of the, the ability it gives you to understand the legal risk um, and to evaluate that risk in ways um, you know, that you'll need to do if you're in uh, a role that has that kind of responsibility. Thank you, Brian. We have a couple other questions, and I did want to um, also include that one of our current students also works for the Ohio Board of Elections, and so we have a wide range of students in this program, um, and another one who works for a school board. Um, so really, every area touches cybersecurity and data privacy. Um, we have two questions. I will answer one of them, and then, Brian, I will pose the second question to you. Um, the one question was, will I send out a recording of this presentation? Absolutely. That'll either be later today or tomorrow that I will send all of you a copy of this recording. Um, the second question, Brian, which I will pose to you is a great question. Um, 
It seems to be a program more tailored to non-attorneys, but do you see this program as being beneficial to people from legal backgrounds? And how do you see attorneys leveraging a program like this? Brian, are you on mute? Sorry, I was. <laughs> I see that question from John. John, yes. it's a great question. And we've had, we actually have a couple of lawyers currently in the program. Uh, if you've got the JD and you're interested in it, then I, I urge you to uh, reach out directly uh, to me or through Julie to me, and, and we can talk about um, what ways to possibly adjust it, um, specifically the, um, the, the either the legal writing and or the introduction to American law course might not be necessary, and then it would be a matter of um, you know, finding an alternative from some of our other courses later in the program. But now that we've got all of those up and running, it's possible to start, say, with Cybersecurity 1 and 2, um, if you've already had a legal background, and then we can work out um, you know, how to give you uh, access to some different courses uh, that, aren't, that aren't on that list. So uh, the short answer is yes, it's absolutely valuable because it is exactly the program that we teach uh, to our own um, JD. And so, um, uh, but, but we might need to do a little bit of tweaking. Uh, and then I, I, Julie, just to save you the time, I see Jerry's uh, question, Thank which I'll you. just read out loud. Uh, will there be interactions with a specific cohort um, and or beyond to other cohorts in various phases of the program. So we, it's, cohort, it's a cohort-based program uh, where you'll start with a, uh, uh, the same group and generally proceed through together. Um, we, we, we did um, for this summer cohort, and we knew the summer numbers would always be a little bit smaller, actually combine them uh, with the, the first cohort for one of the courses just to to make sure there was you know good good numbers for that and so sometimes we might do that but for the most part you'll proceed together with the same uh, cohort and that's again one of the advantages of the synchronous component is it gives you an opportunity to get to know uh, your colleagues right away uh, within those courses and then that helps set up the interaction that some of the upper level courses require including cybersecurity 2 and the risk assessment course where you'll be asked to work in, in small groups on uh, certain projects. Great, thank you. And I do also want to mention that there are opportunities once we're all able, allowed to be back on campus safely, that you'll have the opportunity to come to campus, whether it's through the annual cybersecurity conference or other events that we hold. Um, and we strongly encourage you to come that way to interact with your cohort, other cohort, and faculty members. Um, and John, just to add one more thing to your question about attorneys um, doing this program, I've had the pleasure of speaking with many attorneys who apply, um, and some have been out of school for a very long time and feel that the Introduction to American Law and Legal Writing course makes sense for them, especially since Brian really tailors the Introduction to American Law course to cybersecurity and data privacy. So like Brian said, um, we can have an offline conversation to see what your personal curriculum could look like because we can really tailor this degree to fit you. Um, but I don't believe there are any additional questions. That was a great conversation, so I think we answered them all. Brian, is there anything else you'd like to add before we say goodbye? Uh, yeah, I, I, just real quickly to, to reemphasize the point that you made um, and that I, that I mentioned at the, the top of the session. As students in this program, you really are part of the broader work that the Center of Cybersecurity is doing, and um, we, you know, we, we really try to integrate or at least give you opportunities to integrate and take advantage um, of the many activities of the center most prominently the the annual conference but also we do a range of other things um, that you know we'll we, we'll provide you with information about just give one example uh, over this this summer we uh, participated for the third time with a national nonprofit uh, that um, provides internships that train you to do threat hunting using a um, using a uh, threat information platform, uh, as well as some other tools, including um, social media searches and identity searches. And um, while it's a 
primarily technical program, uh, we've had success in placing a number of law students without technical backgrounds in it, and, and they learned a ton. Uh, and the the um, it, it it does have some independent in cost to it, but um, this year they provided a number of scholarships for our students. And although I don't think any of the MLS students, online MLS students, took advantage of it, uh, you know, we gave you that that same opportunity uh, to get that training. Uh, and then we're engaged in a variety of other projects that we we try to uh, bring students into, or at least you know, do webinars and different things on. I'm personally involved in research related to the. Um, digital contact tracing applications and the privacy issues that they raise. Uh, we likely will do um, a, a webinar on that sometime uh, in the fall because uh, you know it's just incredibly interesting. And so those are the other kinds of uh, opportunities where you'll have opportunities to interact. And of course, if you are in the region or are willing to come out when we do the live events, um, those are excellent opportunities to to come and and start to build. A network because we tend we bring in national speakers um, and so I uh, just wanted to you know emphasize that even though this is an online program uh, we consider you uh, very much to be part of the Cleveland Marshall uh, family and uh, and part of the center's work. Great thank you um, so I believe that is all we have today as there are no more questions but I truly thank each and every one of you for signing on and being here with us today and asking your questions. It was engaging and I enjoyed speaking with each and every one of you. I am sorry that there's a loud motorcycle in my, in my driveway right now. Um, but we really hope that you apply and take advantage of the fact that Brian, John, and I are here and willing to speak to you and really welcome the opportunity to have an individual conversation with you. Um, so with, uh, if there's no more questions, we'll let you get on with the rest of your day, but thank you, Brian, for being here and thank you to the rest of you for being here as well. And I will send out this link, um, either later today or tomorrow. So have a Thanks, great Julie. rest of your day. Bye-bye. Take care.